بينما كان الجندي الإسرائيلي المغرور آمنا مطمئنا مسترخيا في أرض احتلها عنوة وشرد أهلها وإذ به يتفاجأ بهجوم عسكري يخترق الحواجز التي وضعها على الجبهتين السورية والمصرية والتي توهم أنه لا يمكن لقوة مهما بلغت أن تخترقها خط بارليف يسقط القوات السورية تجتاز خط آلون تدخل الجولان تسقط الحماية الإسرائيلية عن جبل الشيخ تصل إلى مشارف طبرية الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية تتدخل تحاول إنقاذ ربيبتها إسرائيل تمدها بجسر من الإمدادات العسكرية تتجسس على القوات العربية لصالحها تلك هي العناوين الحمراء لحرب خلدها التاريخ إنها حرب تشرين التحريرية President Assad tells a German paper that Syria would do everything to remain strong and that a solution through dialogue is possible, but not with the terrorists. Lavrov asserts in a joint press conference with his American counterpart that terrorism and extremism would be combated in Syria, and Kerry asserts that the military scenario to solve the crisis in Syria is unacceptable. The first Judiciary Conference in Syria is held in the Ministry of Justice under the title The Judiciary Authority and New Thought. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. President Bashar al-Assad asserted that Syria would do everything to remain strong and that all the political decisions taken by the West during the past 10 years only supported this rule and this attitude. In an interview with the German paper Der Spiegel, the president said that those who believe that they were isolating Syria in fact isolated themselves from the truth. The solution through dialogue was still possible but not with the armed terrorists. The president asserted that the army and the people in Syria continue to stand together. We have no other option than believing in our victory and saving our country. The president said that the West today is supporting Al-Qaeda terrorists from 80 countries. The president said the West understands reality very, very slowly. Yet the West prefers to believe Al-Qaeda rather than the government. The president said there were contacts with some institutions in Germany through channels that did not 
not exist in the past. He pointed out that Germany and Austria had the more objective vision. This could contribute to the preservation of Europe's interests. The president said Syria was ready to receive German delegations to discuss real contacts that could be their starting points in their work. The president wondered how the interests of the West could be served while Qaeda continued to disrupt things in its backyard. After more than two years, the West should reconsider its policy and ask itself what it could gain from supporting the spread of chaos in Syria. The president said that the leaders of the opposition abroad are enjoying their stay in five-star hotels and obeying the orders of those financing them. However, they have no base here in Syria. The president pointed out that many armed opposition members have withdrawn and returned home to fight side by side with the Syrian army. The solution is possible but not with the armed terrorists. The president asserted that more than 100,000 displaced Syrians have returned home safely after receiving guarantees that the government would protect them. The president wondered who the opposition groups represent. Are they talking about themselves or about the people of Syria or about the states supporting them, like the US, Britain, France, Saudi Arabia or Qatar? When they claim that they represent the Syrian people, they should show this through the ballot box. The president said that the destiny of the president would be determined by the Syrian people because this country does not belong to the president alone but to all the Syrian citizens. The president said that the American president has no right to issue judgments about Syria or to dictate to the Syrians whom they should elect as president. He asserted that the pain inflicted on the Syrian people comes from the explosives and booby-trapped cars brought to our country by the terrorist gangs. The president said that the government responded to the demand of demonstrators. Although their protests were not peaceful, there were victims among the soldiers and the police from the early beginning, yet the special committee amended the constitution in response to the demands of demonstrators. However, the country had to confront terrorism and to defend our people. The president described the UN Security Council resolution about chemical weapons in Syria as a good resolution that did not violate our interests. He pointed out that Russia would support Syria in the various fields because it is committed to the contracts signed between the two countries. This does not include the systems of air defense only, but includes other types of weapons. The Russians are Syria's real friends. They understand events better than the West. They are more independent than the Europeans who rely on the US. The president asserted that Syria has every right to obtain weapons to defend itself. Syria does not occupy anybody's land. He wondered why the world community does not object to Israel obtaining all kinds of weapons. The attitude of the West is not objective, but it represents double standards. That that is why we do not trust the West. The president asserted that Syria believes that this region needs peace and stability. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov stressed that his country and the United States will exert all efforts to help combating terrorism and extremism in Syria, noting that the Syrian government cooperates with the international experts specialized in dismantling chemical weapons. Following his meeting with his U.S. counterpart Kerry on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Indonesia, both Lavrov and Kerry confirmed determination to do everything to help combating terrorism and extremism in Syria. Russian Foreign Minister affirmed that Damascus cooperates well with the international experts and we hope this cooperation will continue like that in the future, the adding, we have no basis to suppose that the Syrian government good cooperation will change. Lavrov asserted that there are enough bases to suspect that the extremist groups might foil the process, expressing hope that all parties, including the neighboring countries, will carry out the UN Security Council's demands and not to allow the chemical weapons reach non-governmental players and not to use their land to commit any terrorist acts. For his part, Kerry described his meeting with Lavrov as constructive and fruitful, asserting that the United States and Russia agreed on that the military scenario to solve the crisis in Syria is impossible and unacceptable. U.S. Secretary said, we will work to hold the Geneva Conference as soon as possible, noting that the conference could be held during the second week of November.
Welcome back. Units of the Syrian Arab Army defeated large numbers of terrorists and destroyed their weapons and equipment in the countryside of Damascus, Aleppo, Dara'a and Idlib. The terrorists belong to the so-called Jabhat al-Nusra and Ahrar al-Sham. Most of them carry the nationalities of Iraq, Libya, Tunisia and Nigeria. In the Damascus countryside, the Syrian Arab Army killed and wounded many armed terrorists and destroyed their hideouts through qualitative and concentrated operations in Al-Qabun, Barze, Jobar, Zamalka, Duma and other towns nearby. In Aleppo, the army carried out operations that destroyed terrorist hideouts in several places. The army also foiled a terrorist attempt to infiltrate into the Carlton hotels in old Aleppo. In Idlib, units of the army killed and wounded dozens of terrorists and destroyed their weapons and ammunition along the highway between Saraqib and Aleppo. In the northern countryside of Hama, the Syrian army ambushed a terrorist gang, killing and wounding most of its members. In Dar'a, the army destroyed terrorist groups and hideouts in several villages. In the Ministry of Justice in Damascus, the first judicial conference began its work under the title The Judiciary Authority and New Thought. The conference will discuss the measures and mechanisms taken for future development and the plans of reform and the relation between lawyers and the judicial authority. A delegation of the national opposition in Syria expressed support for Geneva II conference to reach political solution during a meeting on Sunday with Mukhtar Lamani, director of the office of the UN's envoy to Syria, Lakhdar Ibrahimi, in Damascus. In a statement to the journalists after the meeting, leader of the National Democratic Bloc, Secretary General of the Solidarity Party, Mohammed Abu Qasim, affirmed the support of the national opposition forces to holding the International Geneva II Conference set to be held in mid-November to be a starting point to launch the political solution in Syria. For her part, Secretary General of the National Youth for Justice and Development Party, Berwin Ibrahim, pointed out that the meeting also touched upon the deteriorating humanitarian situation in the areas under the control of the gunmen. She highlighted that the national opposition has drawn out a roadmap to get out of the crisis, which was developed into a form of a plan for the solution, adding that this plan will be put forth at the Geneva II conference by the representatives of the national opposition. Russian President Vladimir Putin lit the Olympic torch of Sochi 2014, declaring the start of the Olympics from the Red Square in central Moscow, which will be carried across Russia to reach Sochi next February. Russia Today website reported Putin as saying in a statement on this occasion that the Olympic fire is the icon of the Games and the sample of peace and friendship that will be carried across our country. Putin stressed that this rally is very important because the torch will pass all regions of Russia and the whole world will see Russia as it is and as we love it. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our site in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Genjan, but after a short break. Prime Minister Wail al halaqi inspected the project to expand the electricity generating station of Deir Ali in Damascus countryside, stressing the government's determination to continue all forms of support to investment, service, development and economic projects. He affirmed that this project's capacity is 250 megawatts and is the first phase to expand the power plant in Deir Ali. He added that the second phase will be completed within two months, while the third will be carried out in the coming six months, so that the total production of the expansion project will reach 750 megawatts to add to the primary production. On the 40th anniversary of the October Liberation War, Governor of Latakia laid down the, cons the cornerstone of the youth housing project in the city, with a total value of 1.59 billion Syrian pounds for the subscribers of the 10-year phase. The number of the flats is more than 1,000. In al qurdaha town, the governor in inaugurated the agriculture department in the city. The governor also opened the education center in al qurdaha the aim of the center is to train nearly 150 nursing students. 
The governor of the Central Bank of Syria said that the dollar price is staggering in the Syrian market because of the producers taken, procedures taken by the bank after the pressures are easing by the countries that are targeting Syria. The Minister of Industry said that the establishment of cement is one of the ministry's most successful companies regarding its achievements during the current circumstances, taking into consideration that three of its companies are out of production. The Director General of Tartus Port pointed out that the performance and the production rate of the port's containers station are not affected after the Philippine investment company left the station one year ago, adding that work continues according to the management's program. The production rate has been more than 29%, while 54 ships have arrived to the station since the beginning of the year until the end of June. Brand futures edged down towards $109 a barrel as oil production resumed in the Gulf of Mexico after a tropical storm, while lingering concerns over the U.S. government shutdown clouded the outlook for demand. European stocks dropped in early trade, with the one benchmark index hitting a four-week low, as the lack of progress in resolving Washington's budget standoff kept investors on edge. Gold rose because of the weaker dollar adding 0.3% to around $1,314.50 an ounce. And now over to some main currencies exchange rates according to the Bulletin of the Central Bank of Syria. With this we conclude our news. Thank you for watching and goodbye.